Hey there, Dr. Alan Christensen here. I want to talk about just how crazy important your adrenals are to your heart and cardiovascular risk, all the ways they tie together, and most importantly, the things you can do to make your heart healthier. So blood pressure. So this is the first big correlation. It seems that blood pressure can be strongly regulated by your glucocorticoid, by your cortisol metabolism. And that's probably the salt link. If you look at salt overall, there's a trend in groups to where salt does influence blood pressure, but many individuals where it doesn't tie in. But it seems that, yeah, glucocorticoids like cortisol are the connection. About a third of people have been shown to have high blood pressure totally associated with their cortisol excess, with their exaggerated cortisol level. And even in the short term, this can radically influence blood pressure. So watching cortisol is critical for that, and salt may be the connection between it and cortisol. You know, quick aside, salt's also been shown to be a big predictor of hunger and just odd food cravings, so nothing to bear in mind about it. Uh, a risk factor for heart disease is truncal obesity, you know, waist circumference. I've seen some papers saying that one of the stronger predictors of heart disease is like the most low-tech thing you can imagine, a simple tape, tape measure. So guys, the further we get above 36 inches around our belly buttons, the more our risk shows up for heart disease, and it really picks up above 38. For women, it's about two inches lower. It starts at about 34 or even 32 based upon some studies. And we know that your glucocorticoid levels like cortisol metabolism, your adrenal function, that's a big predictor for truncal obesity, you know, real strong association. The other big tie-in is your blood sugar. Is blood sugar high or erratic? So it's been shown that this whole thing about disrupted cortisol rhythm, not Cushing's disease, not a crazy cortisol excess, but the rhythm being off, this is one of the strongest predictors of blood sugar running too high and early diabetes risk. And we also know about lipids, about cholesterol, triglycerides, HDL cholesterol. And here too, we think about this circadian cycle, this adrenal stress type phenomena. And in normal populations, this cortisol that we're getting rid of is one of the strongest predictors with pushing down our good cholesterol and making our triglycerides run higher. A separate cardiovascular risk we've got is homocysteine. This is something that genetically some make way too much out of because they can't methylate properly. Well, it turns out that amongst those who are susceptible, the cortisol metabolism also affects homocysteine generation. And homocysteine has been shown to be an independent risk for cardiovascular disease. And now even more direct markers like carotid intermediate thickness, like how thick the protective lining is of the carotid arteries. Guess what, your cortisol curve, lots of data shown that also affects it. And this is worse when the pituitary response is also blunted, and even way worse with Cushing's disease, where you've got extreme high levels of cortisol. Now, another cardiovascular factor is your heart rate variability. And this is fascinating. So if your heart is beating once per second, so 60 times per minute, it's really not exactly once every second. A healthy heart rate will show a little variability. So you've got the fight or flight nervous system and you've got the tend and befriend or the feed and breed, I've heard it called, the relaxing nervous system. And one is like a gas pedal on your heart rate and one is like the brakes. So when they're in good balance, they're doing a gentle ebb and flow back and forth. And what that means is that your heart rate of 60 a minute might be 1.1 seconds, 0 0.9 seconds, 0 0.8, 0 1.2, 0 0.9, 1.1. .1. So a gentle ebb and flow. But what happens is that if these two nervous systems are not well balanced, if there's an exaggerated stress response, your body can't go into the parasympathetic repair mode. We call that an impaired heart rate variability. And this cortisol cycle is one of the stronger risks for changing the heart rate variability. We see this especially in shift workers, you know, those that work at different times throughout the week, like some mornings, some afternoons, and then overnight at some points. Their heart rate variability is extremely disturbed, and that's a big predictor of cardiovascular mortality. And now then we also think about a couple of real hard markers of objective heart disease, like coronary artery CT scoring. <clears throat> we see much more plaque on coronary artery CTs with greater cortisol exposure in cortisol disease states. And then even sudden cardiac death. So you hear about like tragic stories of athletes or like John Ritter just like passing away suddenly. 
And it seems that this cortisol cycle, so not a disease, but just this cortisol rhythm, is one of the stronger predictors for sudden cardiac death as well. So how do we know if this is off? Well, a couple of ways. The easiest thing is the adrenal quiz, you know, adrenalquiz.com, but also salivary cortisol tests show that, and then hair cortisol tests show the total cortisol excretion, so how much your body is getting rid of. We don't see this from blood tests, and we don't always see this from cortisol urine tests because they're mostly showing adrenal cortisol production. And we're really concerned with, when it comes to your heart, what the adrenals make, but also what your visceral fat is making out of the adrenal cortisol and how your body gets rid of it. So the quiz is valid, salivary studies are valid. Hair cortisol, honestly, it's been used mostly in research. There's not really a lot of easy places to do that and not as meaningful. The quiz or salivary are much better. So then what do you do about this? Well, I wrote the Adrenal Reset Diet around a clinical trial in which we showed that just simple good food timed in a strategy could radically improve this cortisol cycle. So the idea with that is that carbohydrates push down cortisol. And if you use that strategically, you want cortisol to be highest in morning and lowest at night. So you do just a little bit of good carbs at breakfast, barely any, some at lunch, and then a healthy dose in the evening. And that helps to engender a good cortisol curve. So that's the Adrenal Reset Diet. And simplest, easiest way to push down good cortisol. And you can do that, vegan, paleo, AIP, whatever diet, with the carbohydrate you consume, shoot for about three quarters of a cup in the evening at least. L no more than about a quarter cup in the morning. That simple shift can improve the cortisol, radically cut your cardiovascular risk and make you feel a lot better and drop weight easier and have more energy and sleep better and just have a whole lot more fun. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. Take great care of yourself and we'll talk in really soon. Bye-bye.